my name is Shelly. Um, I recently wrote an article on cannabis oil and Lyme disease. Since writing the article, it has sparked a very unexpected movement in the Lyme community, but one that is nonetheless extremely exciting. Um, the article has popped up on websites throughout various countries, Lyme websites, marijuana websites, and health websites. So I have received an overwhelming amount of emails. And I feel that each one of you deserves a very in-depth response to all of your questions, but I'm only human. And so I figured the best way to reach you all would be to just make a YouTube channel completely devoted to cannabis and Lyme disease. This first video will just cover the main, um, you know, main pressing issues I've been faced with since writing my article. After that, I will make more topic specific ones. Okay, so first off, um, I had Lyme disease for nine years. Uh, two years ago, I went completely debilitated, forgot how to read, write, walk, talk, was in a wheelchair, spoon-fed, used a shower chair, had amnesia, didn't know anyone in my family, went paralyzed from the mouth, mouth down for a bit, uh, Bell's palsy, of course, um, over 10 grandma seizures a day, and you know, I really don't remember much of my life then. All I know is that I was breathing, but I wasn't alive. Um, I did antibiotics for a year, and I owe no credit to them for healing. Um, they did not work for me, they worked against me. That is not to say they don't work for you, I'm not bashing your treatment. All of our cases are so different. I then did the Buna protocol for a year, and I owe an immense amount of credit to that protocol. I honestly do. But towards the end of it, it had been about a year, I still felt I had a major hump in healing to get over. And so, I don't know why I did this, but I took a shot in the dark and tried using cannabis oil. And it worked and essentially healed my Lyme, lupus, mycoplasma, Babesia, and Bartonella, which is why I'm sharing this with you. Um, one of the most common things I get from the hate mails I receive, because yes, I do receive a few of those, are, um, is from women, usually women with children, and they say that I'm promoting drug abuse for young kids. Uh, that, I don't know, I, I wish that was a joke, but I don't think it is. I think they're serious. <laughs> and you see, the problem with that is if we're going to play that card, then we have to also acknowledge that anything when used in excess can be harmful. So those prescription drugs especially that everyone's popping and those vaccines, um, well, those should not be promoted in any way either. Uh, neither should any food because eating can give you diabetes, which is a much bigger issue in America than marijuana abuse. Um, and we shouldn't drink water because your brain will swell. So if we can't write about the benefits of a plant from our earth, then I do not see how we can possibly think it's okay to write about the benefits of man-made substances that are filled with harmful chemicals. Just because something is legal does not mean it is good for you. Also, if you have not been on both sides of the issue, I, I really, I don't know, I don't think it's wise to pass judgment because that judgment will inevitably have an immense amount of ignorance attached to it. And when I say both sides, I mean you or someone you know was once addicted to not any drug but marijuana and you or someone you know also has experience using marijuana to treat themselves medicinally. I have been on both ends and that is why I feel comfortable writing about it and talking about it. Okay, next topic. Everyone asks where to get their oil um, and where I get mine. I cannot tell you where I get mine because that would be a very, very bad idea. Um, I also cannot tell you where to get yours because I do not know where you live. I do not know if it's legal or illegal, so you have to figure that out yourself. I'm sorry. Um, but you can make the oil by yourself at home. And I have heard of a lot of people now are trying to order it offline. Uh, that sounds bizarre because not only is it insanely expensive, I'm sure it's insanely illegal, uh, probably more illegal than this video, <laughs> and you honestly don't know what you're getting. They could just put olive oil in there and charge you a couple grand. So personally, I would never ever advise that. Um, when people ask how much I take I and how much they should take, I can't tell you how much you should take and you shouldn't listen to anyone else who tries to tell you how much to take, uh, except for your own body because all our systems are so sensitive. I started with one single little drop under my tongue every waking hour to keep it steadily in my system. And then right before bed, I would do a whole dropper full. And um, 
it would make me herx and a lot of people say well did you get high you know I don't want to get high well yeah I got high and I was so thankful for it because I'd rather be giggling my way through a herx than going crazy so yeah I got high and the next thing is I've been hearing about Rick Simpson oil and hash oil those are the dark oils the oil I used was amber colored and mixed with coconut oil so it also battled candida at the same time um, the common you know well, for me it was a misconception but you know the common thought is that since those other oils are more potent then they're more healing for me I saw them as more damaging so I never tried them my body's so sensitive that I just wasn't willing to go there so you just have to listen to your body once again um, so basically that's all I'm gonna cover in this video um, if you have any certain topics you'd like me to address just please let me know and I will gladly address them while I'm researching and writing about this subject. Um, I hope you all really are getting on the road to healing and I thank everyone for their support. The Lyme community has been and continues to be such an amazing group of people.